Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another board to Naruto Next Generation discussion on the fallout from Boruto Chapter 78. And today, we got to talk about the ramifications that come from Boruto Uzumaki finally getting the scar not only above his eye, but also getting his Byakugan damage as well. I think we all can agree that Boruto getting his eye damage was not something that we had on our bingo cards for Boruto Chapter 78 or Boruto 2023. The scar, absolutely, but but having the eye itself with the slit in it, if it didn't take you guys by surprise, at least at the very least grab me by surprise. However, this has led to another question as to what it means going forward because Momoshiki seemed to not be shocked by the fact that Boruto lost his eye, but even went as far as to say that you've lost one blue eye, which opens up the door for Boruto potentially losing his other eye as well, which is what I want to talk to you guys about in today's video because there's actually some really interesting folklore and cultural and mythology connections that we can draw from this. Now, as we all know, by the time that Boruto is 16 years old, he's got the scar over his eye that he currently has, but his other eye has not been damaged yet. But everything that happens after that point in time is still a bit of a mystery to us. But given Momoshiki's words, we have to at least discuss if this might be a possibility moving forward where Boruto ends up getting his other eye damaged as well. Momoshiki made it sound as if there's some sort of relevance to Boruto losing his eye. And I think there might be something here for Boruto losing both of his eyes or at the very least having one eye be affected in a way that it leads to a different power. And it's because once again, when we look at the Japanese culture, the folklore, the mythology, we can start seeing connections here. Now, longtime viewers of the channel know when it comes to breaking down folklore, mythology, cultural stuff that Masashi Kishimoto uses for Naruto's manga and what's been mixed into Boruto's manga since he's been back as the writer. When it comes to stuff like that, I usually am very quick to point it out. So Masashi Kishimoto has a penchant for mixing in the various influences from each of these things, where it's not quite a one-to-one -one retelling of whatever inspiration he takes from it, nor is it uncommon for him to mix and match different influences in order to tell a completely different story. So for the first one, we have to look at the Itako, which are women who have lost their eyesight and they have the ability to speak to Shinto spirits. When you look at some of the writing, Blindness being associated with spiritual powers can go all the way back to the Meiji era and the Nara era of Japanese. And the Nara era is something that Masashi Kishimoto has actually incorporated quite a bit into Naruto's story. This shouldn't seem odd to you because in Naruto, we've already seen the concept of blindness being played with, where the Sharingan loses its light when it becomes a Mangekyo Sharingan, but emerging out of that darkness, i.e. that blindness, is the eternal Mangekyo once a new Mangekyo is transplanted into that person. Both of the Uchiha Kenjutsu give off enormous power in terms of the hack's abilities of the Jutsu, but it comes at the blindness for the Sharingan being used. Taking it a step further with just literal blindness, we saw Itachi and Madara being able to still use their Susano. Normally, the Itako is associated with young girls and women, but as previously stated, mixing and matching folklore, cultural, and mythology stuff is not uncommon for Masai Sasha Kishimoto as a writer, even to say gender bends something that he takes inspiration from. Itako in some writings is believed to have links to the karmic debt in particular the accumulation of reverse energy or negative energy that comes from a result of misdeeds which also has ties to buddhism so in boruto we've already seen a few things that point towards some aspect of both itako and the karmic debt in particular the reverse energy aspect so in a video that i helped years ago with anime balls deep over on their channel that we were originally going to collaborate on but i had to back out due to some personal issues on my end we did a script on why boruto and Kawaki's karma seals were resonating and we looked at both the scientific reason behind it but also we found a link with Buddhism that goes back to the karmic debt and the flow of positive energy and negative energy which makes sense when you look at how Boruto's upbringing and how Boruto's own heart contrasts Kawaki's and how negative can turn into positive and vice versa. In Boruto we also have a being in Shiba Yotsuki who has transcended the samsaric cycle of life, death, and rebirth 
rebirth, transcending to a state of being where those things no longer apply to him due to him existing on a plane above each of these. Readers of Samurai 8 can see where this is going in the long run because we had a character in Samurai 8 go from existing in the physical plane to going down the same path where they no longer needed a body and transcended the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. However, going back to Boruto, while that might be the end game for Boruto's character and what we end up seeing, the idea that Boruto losing his eye to gain a new power, i.e. that pure eye that we see in the flash sword sequence or losing both eyes at some point to gain new power doesn't seem too far-fetched because the question that many people had is given that Shibai exists on another plane of existence outside of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth and Boruto is a story of breaking free of those samsaric cycles. We've all asked, will anyone be able to communicate with Shibai or grab Shibai's attention? Because you don't introduce a character like that, name drop them, and never bring them into the story. So when we borrow from the Itako, that might be how that's done since they can communicate not just with the dead, but also with the gods themselves, which in this case, we have an Otsutsuki god in Shibai, and we have Boruto, who's an Otsutsuki vessel, and was born as a human with strong genetics of the Otsutsuki clan, despite being a human and in possession of chakra, which chakra itself originally originated from the Otsutsuki clan itself. The other thing that stands out here is that Boruto got a scar from Kawaki, who not only has the dojutsu that when it's fully matured, has the pattern of the Dharma will but its powers also trace back to the Ishin Boshi folklore which include the wish granting mallet which is on Ishiki's body and it's on Ishiki's clothes and a model referred to having his wish granted by Ishiki by bringing his daughter all the way back to life because the clone of Abiki i.e. Delta wasn't in possession of her actual soul despite having her memories. In Japanese folklore, you have the Daruma and the Kagemasa, which the latter should stick out to anime fans because that's a Boruto anime character. There's a folklore behind the character and there's also a samurai that used to exist. However, we're gonna be going with the Daruma because this seems like it's most likely. It's a Buddhist wishing doll, just like you have the wish granting mallet, you have a Buddhist wishing doll where one writes their wish down and fills in one of the eyes of the doll, leaving the other eye blank until the wish is fulfilled. Borto's scar and the damage to his eye, it could be a play on this, with Borto's unfulfilled wish being saving Kawaki from his madness and bringing his parents back, which in theory would reverse that prophecy of Borto losing everything, because the start of him losing everything was him losing his parents. Going a step further, Kawaki has the eye of the Dharma wheel. Akala is a violent deity and a Dharmapala, which protects the Dharma in Buddhism. In various arts, he's depicted as having his left eye closed or squinted, and the right eye is always looking towards the sky. Boruto's scar is on his right eye, which has the Byakugan and the Jogan, the eyes that come from the celestial beings of the Otsutsuki clan, which descended from the skies itself. Boruto, when Momoshiki takes over, Akala, that right eye, is always looking towards the sky. So you can see the connection on that part. Now, Boruto, when Momoshiki takes over, always has his left eye closed. Just like how Akala either has his left eye closed or he has it squinted. Boruto just happens to get a scar from someone who has the Dharma Will eye. Boruto just happens to get that scar on the same side where he has an eye that comes from the celestial gods, i.e. the Otsutsuki. That same eye just happens to be the eye that Akala uses to look up towards the sky. That's not by mistake. Boruto and Kawaki are very clearly connected. That much is certain between their karma resonating, Kawaki giving Boruto the scar, and there being other folklore ties we can see there's a link towards what is coming. However, what we also have to look at is if this negative turns into a positive, then the positive can turn into a negative, which is partly what ABD and I discussed years ago when we scripted the scientific reasoning behind Boruto and Kawaki's karma resonating. There were some things when it comes to Buddhism that we started to go with, but we decided to keep it more so on the scientific side because at the time, Boruto was heavier on science than it was on the Buddhism stuff. That's where it differentiated from Naruto at the time. I stick by the belief that Boruto won't turn evil. Rogue Ninja Boruto, where he's the outlaw that people want, I don't think that happens. I don't think Boruto becomes a villain. However, Boruto is clearly going from a positive outlook to a negative surrounding 
due to what he's experiencing a karmic opposite of kawaki who's going from a negative upbringing and outlook to what is likely going to be a positive when he's saved from his madness ultimately because this is a shonen it's going to have a happy ending for kawaki most likely this brings us to momoshiki and the idea that momoshiki being both the source of boruto's new powers via his otsuskification and the idea of momoshiki is just gaslighting boruto to make things that Boruto fears come to pass, a self-fulfilling prophecy basically. It's not something we can rule out. Momoshiki does come off like the type to pull something like this off where he is doing all this just to torment Boruto in order to make it easier to break him and control his body. Power that Boruto would normally use to protect others is now being used to harm those who he cares for. It's poetic and it's devious at the same time. Momoshiki stands to gain the most from Boruto losing everything and being driven into despair that smirk on his face when he tells borto that the end is already beginning is a red flag it comes right at a time where borto's dojutsu is now damaged we've known for years that momoshiki sees something in borto the boy who for all intents and purposes was an accidental vessel who he lucked up upon, but he's hit the jackpot with the boy who has those strongly inherited genes from the Otsuski. If Boruto does end up losing the other eye or gaining an additional power from having his eye damaged that he has, it's gonna be a very telling thing because it would imply that Boruto having this power is either a gift or a curse depending on who's using that power, between Boruto or Momoshiki. However, I'm curious to know you guys' thoughts on this. Do you think given all the connections, it was by mistake that Kawaki gave Boruto the eye? Or was this intentional? Is there another power or a more matured power coming as a result of Boruto's eye being damaged? Could this be the road to Boruto eventually gaining the ability to sense or speak to Shibai if more of the Itako points are built upon is that sacrifice and is that a payoff for Borto losing his eye while you think that over click here to watch the Borto chapter review if you haven't already or click here for my Chainsaw Man chapter 121 review <laughs>